After the whirlwind launch of the Android 12 developer preview one, we've been diving in further into the first build of the upcoming OS to find some hidden gems and brand new features that you might just have missed. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. So while we've already done a deep dive into what we'd formerly consider the top user facing features, the Android 12 developer preview one also includes a ton of other additions that we didn't initially spot or were hidden within the OS behind ADB shell commands that are not quite ready for prime time. And while many of these new features are to be excited by, there are a few that you won't be able to get working or enable unless you know a way around ADB commands and are happy to tinker away. Our disclaimer ahead of time is that we won't be sharing some of these due to the buggy nature of many of the features that are clearly meant for internal usage. Luckily though, evidence from previous year's previews indicates that some may arrive in a future developer preview ahead of the full Android 12 release. Of course, not everything arrived in the first Android 12 preview was intended to be user facing. Much of the new additions are under the hood. Some are outright unavailable and in various states of development. We dug deep into the first preview though and have enabled some features that are likely to arrive in either a future preview or a beta build. So the first developer preview of Android 12 added some neat new tricks, but the promise of a one handed mode is something that should really excite longtime Android fans. It's something that has been a notable absentee for what feels like an age and many Android OEMs have therefore offered their own take on a one handed reachability mode but Google's implementation looks like it will follow Apple's lead. When activated, the option will let you swipe down on the gesture navigation bar. This will shift your entire device UI downwards, allowing you to reach the upper portions of the display. There's no denying that this mode has been lifted directly out of iOS, but it makes sense given that people who switch between the two biggest mobile OSs will know exactly how to invoke the mode. To go back to the normal full screen view, it's as easy as swiping down or tapping in the gap to return everything back to normal. Now this isn't quite as good as the Sony implementation in our book, but it's a solid start, especially with smartphones still getting bigger with each passing year. Scrolling screenshots or extended screenshots are another feature that are so overdue that it feels like Google has been actively avoiding adding to the core Android build just to annoy us. However, just like a few important features within Android 12 developer preview one, this is also not currently user facing. It has to be enabled via ADB commands and it's a little lacking in Google's usual polish at the moment. Effectively, when you take a screenshot within an app or on a website that extends beyond the standard viewport, you get an option in the floating window in the bottom left to scroll. Everything is then stitched together once you've tapped that into one seamless image, except there are a few little issues here and there that clearly need to be ironed out. The animation is almost non-existent at the moment with a snap to the bottom causing some issues with places like the Google Play Store. Sometimes it just cuts off and ends an expanded screenshot unless you have fully extended out your page as far as you want to capture. It's buggy to say the least, but it does look like we might finally get the option in Android 12 wholesale. It also looks like Google is set to shake things up on the lock screen of Pixel devices with some tweaks likely to arrive with the full build later this year. We have found some changes can be enabled, but with sometimes no end result. The most obvious change is that of the clock, which is significantly larger using two separate lines with the hour above the minutes. When notifications are visible, the clock moves off to the upper right, just above your notifications. Meanwhile, the date and weather have also had a little tweak with the date appearing as a separate line above the current weather. Instead of sitting in the center below the time, these two now appear in the upper left opposite the clock itself. Google hasn't made this change publicly visible, so it's clearly very much in the work in progress phase. That said, it could be a sign of a big shift in how we soon get introduced to Android's UI. Another huge component in the new theming system that was first uncovered ahead of the Android 12 developer preview one is that of automated themes based upon your wallpaper. We haven't been able to manually activate this ourselves as yet, but Android developer KDragon was able to showcase the feature in action in developer preview one. The theming tool has the code name Monet but it's not totally clear when Google will release the Android 12 Monet theming tool to users, but based upon years past, a release during the Android 12 beta phase, which is publicly facing, does make the most sense. This year's schedule puts that release sometime in around May. This new theming option might offer up a way to keep your smartphone theme fresh without having to delve deeply into settings menus or tweak colors and icons yourself. Android 12 could do all of the heavy lifting 
by adding accent colors whenever you change your wallpaper, something that would be a really nice ease of use touch. So that's the non-user facing features or secret features out of the way, but we have some more options that you can actually delve into right now. Naturally, accessibility is clearly another sensible tentpole within future Android builds. As starting in Android 12, you'll be able to use magnification on either the entire display, as it has been for a while, or just a small section of it. To help this, a floating window can be added and moved around your display to magnify a selected area. The feature can be a little finicky to get properly working or set up, but in practice, it's very well implemented once you figure it out. The floating magnification window in this developer preview build of Android 12 is just a small square that can be moved to zoom in on specific parts of your screen, and it works in every section of the OS. As you reach the corners and sides, you can continue to slide your finger to focus on the edges of the display. One of the best aspects of this new method is the interchangeability between full screen and sectional magnification. Live but unfinished in the first Android 12 developer preview, a new Reduce Bright Colors toggle appears in the Quick Settings options with a menu for further options on a long press. Think of this feature as a way to quickly lower your screen brightness by a specific amount or percentage. You can select anything from 0 to 100%, and it's another accessibility tweak designed with the visually impaired in mind. As with many other accessibility options, you can quickly activate Reduce Bright Colors with a pre-assigned two-finger swipe up on the gesture navigation bar, or by pressing the up and down volume buttons simultaneously, which can also be used for the magnification process we mentioned. Only one made by Google device so far, the Pixel 3 XL has had a notch, but the Pixel 4a, 4a 5G and Pixel 5 include an upper left punch hole. If you hate having a portion of the display missing and have any device from the late 2020 Pixel cohort, then with the Android 12 developer preview one, you can actually hide the punch hole. A new hide option in the display cutout menu available under drawing, just a little over halfway down the screen in developer options, allows you to enable this and it simply adds a black bar to the status bar that attempts to hide the Pixel 4a, 4a 5G and 5's hole punch. The time, notifications and other system icons remain in place with a new darker background. It's not without issue though. Not many apps actually support this shifted status bar and it can be a little jarring even in first party apps like Play Store. If the punch hole annoys you that much, well, it looks like in Android 12, it will allow you to at least hide it in the software. Maybe you remember the Columbus double tap gesture that we unearthed over 18 months ago. Well, it looks like it's coming in Android 12 as the option to add the gesture is present in the developer preview one. The downside, well, it doesn't actually work just yet. Provided you have the Pixel 5, you can turn on the double tap gesture within settings, system and gestures. While it doesn't work just yet, you should be able to double tap the back of your device to do things like open the Google Assistant, take a screenshot, play and pause media, open the recent apps menu, and even fully expand your notification drawer. At the moment, the option only looks as though it is available on the Pixel 5. This could be the replacement for the popular Active Edge gesture, which was removed starting on the Pixel 4a. That said, we really do hope it does get activated in a future developer preview, as Apple managed to beat Google to the punch by implementing it in iOS 14. File this feature under things that Google removes or tweaks that annoy or frustrate the core fan or user base. For some strange reason, the Android 12 developer preview one build tweaks the AMOLED black dark theme to a deep blue gray shade that albeit fairly nice looking, isn't exactly going to be a popular change. If this hints that in a future build, you'd be able to make adjustments to the darker theme or select whether you want an AMOLED black or darker gray, then we think that might be fine. The problem is that certain menus though still haven't been updated or changed meaning that you might dive into the settings menu and be greeted with an AMOLED friendly color scheme, while at your home screen, things have a slightly lighter tone. It's a change that we'd wager nobody asked for, but Google appears to be bringing it anyway, which is not much of a shock. As we've already said, there are more than just a few surface level changes in the Android 12 developer preview one, but this expanded selection happens to include a few extra user facing features that we found thus far, plus some extras that Google appears to be actively working on. With that said though, what is your favorite new feature or features? Let us know down in the comment section below, but until next time, this is Damien with 9to5Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.